Hey, what's up guys? John here. Over 600,000 people inside of California no longer have power due to everything that is happening right now. The massive floods, the destructions, the billions of dollars in damage. Dangerous storm situation in California. Power has been knocked out for hundreds of thousands. 900,000 people without power. Might sound far-fetched, but think. San Diego, two weeks ago, they had billions of dollars in damages across residential property, commercial property, you know, cars. It was a disaster. The biggest storm in 175 years. Now, they're seeing the same situation happening inside of San Francisco, coming all the way down into Los Angeles and everywhere in between, and hitting the Hollywood Hills. I mean, this situation is an absolute disaster. And when you look at what is going on now, you'll realize that things are about to change in a very, very, very big way. There's a lot of new bills and laws being worked on right now that are about to change property ownership in a very big way around insurance and how these insurance companies are going to be able to afford all these storms happening by what's going on inside of the environment. All state insurance has announced it will no longer write new homeowners policies in California. The company cited a growing threat of natural disasters. Now you have to ask yourself, what is this going to look like? What is this going to mean for the cost of living? What is this going to mean for you know your own insurance, your own property taxes? Well, I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to show you what the laws are going to look like and how this is all going to be coming to a world near you in 2024 and then 2025. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate the people about what's going on in America's economy. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item under credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow, for Tuesday. Take a look at this. So California flooding video shows damaging mud flow strike in Los Angeles. So this right here, up uh, uh, Planta, California. Then you have, uh, this is Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon, if you don't know where this is, this is just in between San Fernando Valley and West Hollywood. There's just one little road called Laurel Canyon. A lot of these homes in this area, two, three million bucks. But if you go two miles you know, west, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio's neighborhood, the Bird Streets, I mean, you're looking 40, 50 million dollars for a nice house over there. So this area is getting absolutely destroyed. Then you have Santa Monica Mountains, you have Rustic Canyon, I mean, it's, it's turning into a very interesting situation. So what they're saying now is 600,000 people are now impacted, 600,000. And before, this was just a couple hours ago, 500,000 customers are without power in California as of Monday morning, mostly in the northern and central parts of the state, although Los Angeles is reporting 4,000 powerless homes and businesses. Catastrophic flooding to hit California as bad weather continues. Monster storm forecast worsens LAOC danger zones. Now. Here's how this is all going to work out. Many people right now are jumping to the conclusion that, oh, insurance is probably going to be going up a little bit, you know, a little bit more. You know, insurance is really expensive. That's probably what many people are assuming. But that, that couldn't be further from the truth. That is going to happen. We are going to see insurance rates rise. But what they're proposing now is that the tax base, the tax base is going to continue to skyrocket because what they want is the federal government to subsidize everything that's going on with, uh, with all of this damage and happening. So how this is going to work is insurance such as State Farm and Allstate are leaving fire and flood prone areas. So what we're going to start to see here is we're going to see a lot of these small insurance companies fold. And then you're going to see the bigger companies like Allstate and State Farm and, you know, Geico. They're going to start acquiring a lot of these failing insurance companies. And then what's going to happen is as they begin to have market share, there's only, you know, eight or 10 or 15 large insurance companies, they will then be able to control pricing. They'll likely continue to increase rates. Rates will continue to go up. And then Americans are going to demand a solution. And then that solution will be provided likely by the federal government. And uh, this is how this is going to look. I mean, what are the odds? This bill came out today, right? February 5th. It says the red flags in an Insure Act, natural catastrophe reinsurance program. And what they say is millions of Americans are squaring up with homeowner insurance affordability and the availability crisis aimed by climate. Legislators are set to grapple with weather and federal reinsurance backstop that have garnered insurance industry opposition and could offer a solution. What does that solution look like? The program would expose taxpayers to potentially huge liabilities as the federal government would be on the hook for losses above a certain threshold and large insurers could potentially abuse the relatively low attachment points contemplated by the act. So taxpayers, right? Then right here, this also came out, uh, this came out, uh, let's see here, June 6th, right? This came out June 6th and what they said 
at that time is should the government get involved. Insurance is regulated mostly by state governments, but Keyes said it may be time for the federal government to step into the market, much like it did when it created the National Flood Insurance Program in the 1960s because there was no private flood insurance. He said he wouldn't be surprised to see a national program for wildfire insurance, especially because California has been ravaged by fire in the last decade. One of the largest was in 2018 campfire, which destroyed 18,000 structures and cost more than $10 billion in damage. Keyes also said he expects more states will begin offering these specialized affordable homeowners insurance policies as private insurers back out of the markets or adjust premiums so high that they are prohibitive for the average homeowner. And then he references citizens, property insurance, which is government backed. It's government backed, assisted by the uh, Small Business Administration right here, Small Business Administration, and also Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, right? So when you start to see this, you're seeing a big change coming to insurance, a very big change. And it, it didn't just start in June of 2023. In fact, they've been talking about this, for example, this article here about what this solution is going to look like. And this has already been worked on November 4th, 2021. And so here's what here's what's going to happen. Business stakeholders ready to reinvest in climate resilient buildings. It's going to likely get a lot cheaper to get insurance on properties with these upgrades. So if you have a home that you know, you're really, really worried about the insurance costs on this property, you have to look at what this is going to look like for you know, bringing this up to code for the new building standards, because the new building standards are now underway. And so if you bring it up to code, what will likely happen is going to be cheaper to insure, easier to insure. And people that don't have the ability to bring it up to code, they're going to be hit with much higher premiums, lower resale values, a lot of change. Here's what I mean. Business stakeholders ready to invest in climate resilient buildings. This came out four days ago. It says almost 99% of all commercial stakeholders affirm that complying with current building standards is essential to protecting properties against climate risk. And more than half, 53%, are willing to spend at least 20 grand or more to increase resilience. Now, here inside of this article, they say that they are going to uh, tap in to public in climate projects, tapping private investment for public climate projects. And what they said here is that they're actually going to tap uh, private equity capital. So they're going to be tapping private investment funding and uh, they're going to be getting this money from private equity investors. They're going to borrow the money to do these upgrades to their properties. And then the uh, private equity company is going to receive a dividend, you know, almost like a, a rental payment every single month on that until they are fully paid back. Uh, and so when you look at this, you're like, all right, well, how's this going to be? How's this going to work? Well, they say many more cities are going to follow decarbonization and that local governments are best positioned to lead on buildings. Local governments are in the, a good place to tackle the building issue because many existing policy structures have given them the majority of oversight in regulating buildings. A big reason why cities have really emerged as leading in decarbonization, and particularly with buildings, is traditionally land use and development has been more in the realm of state and local governments. They set the building codes, they have the levers. So you start to follow this and you start to see that no, this is actually what's going to happen here. So how to make buildings more resilient to this. Use green roofs to improve building insulation and remove heat from the air through evapotransportation. Increase vegetation to help reduce external surface temperatures. Wall, right? And they have this whole list. But if you look at the website here, you look at these three letters or one letter and two words, right? And then you type in and you start to really look through this website. What you'll start to see here is that, you know, there's a lot of really, really big money, you know, and a lot of power. Uh, held inside of this website. These are their partners, right? They're the funders. And you start to look at this, you're like, okay, well, what is the plan for these properties? Like, what are the, what's the plan? I mean, you got, you, know, you got Hillary right here. You got George. You got a lot of like really, really, you know, George right here. You got a lot of really, really big names here. You got World Bank. And so when you look at it, you're like, okay, well, what's the plan for buildings and how is this all going to play out? And so what they say here is that implementing and enforcing building energy regulations and mandatory performance standards for existing buildings, including measures to reduce embodied emissions for buildings with benchmarking whole life emissions, incentivizing and implementing citywide actions towards grid decarbonization. So when you start to see these storms in you know, Maine and you start to see it in Florida and you see it in California and you see it in all the different markets, you have to ask yourself, is this going to be sustainable going forward? Or are these properties going to have to be upgraded to meet this new normal? It's looking like these properties are going to have to be upgraded. It's going to look like we're going to see a lot of folding inside of these insurance, inside of the insurance market. A lot of these companies are going to fold. A lot of these you know, companies that can withstand it are going to get a lot bigger. They're going to increase rates. And, uh, and there's going to be probably like a citizen's like situation in Florida that's going to happen. 
uh, on a national scale. And it's actually gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, Citizens right now is over 20% market share. It wouldn't surprise me to see Citizens grow to 30, 40% market share over the next couple of years, maybe even more. And we see a lot of other companies pop up like that and start to acquire market share. So my advice is uh, pay very, very close attention to building codes, pay very attention, close attention to what's happening inside of the insurance market. If you are thinking about investing in real estate, pay attention to this because you have to ask yourself this really big question. How are properties valued? Residential properties generally are valued based on the area, right? People, how, where people wanna live, how much they're willing to spend to live there. And then also the buyer's ability, their debt to income ratio, how much they can actually afford to pay. And uh, when you look at a situation like what we're having right now with high interest rates, high insurance rates, high taxes, you're gonna see a situation where in an affordability crisis, there's gonna be a smaller pool of available buyers. But at the cost in which to service these properties are getting more and more expensive by the month, you're gonna see a pool of sellers continue to grow, meaning the supply and demand ratio is gonna to continue to change. Meaning, the price is actually gonna be coming down in a pretty big way. Especially when you look at the labor market, you look at what's going on in the overall economy, it's equating to problem for, uh, a big problem for residential real estate and a big opportunity for smart and savvy investors that are forward thinking, that are looking two, three steps down the road. Uh, those people are gonna do really well. But those that are not paying attention to everything and connecting the dots, they're gonna uh, have a rude awakening. What do you think about this entire situation? Where do you see the real estate market going in 2024 and 2025? Drop below, hit the like button. If you wanna fix your credit to position yourself for funding, greatcreditfast.com, that's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge dollars, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description, just below this video, schedule a free strategy session for Tuesday. Catch you in the next video.